everybody Jerome right here again with another video okay of my decodings referencing that of Renaissance artists and their higher knowledge of back in the Renaissance era and before and prior and um, going way back to um, like the second century that there was information and, um, and records which reflect that of how mankind came into existence um, genetic alterings that that um that are based from our original state state of that of being ape to that through the black man into the um, different cultures that we see all around us today referencing um the likenesses of man okay um this was not by accident people this was not by a selective process this was by a precise cult-like ritual practice that actually created humans as we visualize and see them today um, through our different eyes, through our different hairs, through our different genetic presences. I mean, people, we were genetically braced and it is being done today and being genetically manipulated and what's being done today. Um, again, what we have here is a Renaissance painting by Rembrandt. This is a 1662 through 1669 painting by Rembrandt, and it's the return of the prodigal son. Now, this is another historical moment where different artists, um, such as like Titan, um, um, Michelangelo, these artists refer references these historical moments because it signifies a genetic bridging and manipulation and or contamination of a large scale mass on areas on areas that required a recording and that's what these images signify so whenever you have an artist um, or artists renaissance there are before that all jump on the bandwagon of referencing a historical moment in time it doesn't have nothing to do with nothing divine, people. I mean, that's that's a bunch of BS. What it is referencing is a historical genetic bridging that required a record. Same thing as if you, uh, like, if you go into a doctor and, I mean, if there was a cure for cancer or if there was a change in cancer, these records, people, are referenced in a large scale on these, um, on these artists' um, paintings. Okay, um, here, I already told you that um, back then there were references of homosexual acts, um, references of, um, of penises, references um, of, um, as you see here, this, this um, like a pauper uh, peasant kneeling down before this clergyman. I mean, these references indicate a sexual act which resulted in that of genetics being passed th from him through into there now I'm looking at an image and the reason why I'm stopping here is because I'm looking at an image I'm gonna draw it in as I'm, as I'm here I'm looking at an image from this angle and I have a woman in his back facing this way but yet I see another woman I'm gonna show you something how these artists captured this imagine a genetic girl you know the dotted lines and it shows you the the a gen genetic chart and it shows you which genetics are present in that of us well that's what these paintings do but in a colorful way and they show the creatures that actually genetically contributed to our becoming and um, our genetic bridging and these pictures do it in a sense that, I mean, before these charts were available, the, the, these encryptions tell us who we are. I can tell you who Jesus is, and I mean, because it's all readable, people, and you can actually see it. Now, I'm going to draw something for you right quick, but I have this in another way, so I'm going to bring up another image, but check this out. Look at what I can see here. Let's give this a band right across here. This here is a witch-like woman 
Madonna like woman who I dove as the mother of creation. I'm at her nose right there. Here's her mouth. And here's her chin coming down here, right there. I didn't draw it in. Now, can you see that image? Now, it's multi-dimensional. I just didn't, as a matter of fact, let me color it in a little bit more. Because she actually appears two ways. I'm going to show you another image of how she appears in another way. Check this out. These images show the multi-dimensional evolutionary faces of our creators and our evolutionary ancestors. Now, this is just one of two faces that is actually here. Her likeness, the mother of creation likeness, is in here facing another direction as, as well. And she appears almost like in a sense of being like almost like Queen Esther. Uh, okay, now there's there's one. Did I put anything else there that I need to put? Or maybe a line, perhaps. There you go. You see that face? This whole image captures similar images, and it lets you know the genetic trail of these beings. All right. Now I'm gonna take this. Well, I'm not gonna take it down. I'm gonna leave it up. This here object. Okay, look at this. You cannot see it from this angle. Well, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna draw you another face. This object right here, cloaked in, represents that of a penis. Right here. All right. Whose penis does it represent? You see this object right here? Let me let me draw that. I already have some lines here. That's why I'm drawing on it so easy. You see that object right there? Did I just the whole object right here? Come, I'm gonna, let me get my mark. My mark. It represents that of a penis. Right here. I don't know if you can see the lines. Okay, yeah, you can see it. There's the opening of the penis right there, and it's laid there just like old pudge. You see the mother of creation right there? I'm gonna draw her face right there. I'm going to draw her, look, look at this people, there's her eye, now this is the return of the prodigal, prodigal son, you can actually look at her lips, cleverly, put a line there, look at her lips, look at, I'm, look at the precision people that I'm using here, and draw, drawing this witch like woman's face, look at that people, look at this, I'm at the wrinkles over her forehead right there, look at this, can you see her face right there? Now, I'm going to show you something else. Whose penis is this? Well, it is, it is that of our ancestors, our ancestral ape. Here, let me show you where the ape is. First of all, let me give you this other penis coming off the ape's head to let you sh to show you that there's no mistake there being, uh, being made. It shows you people. See that? I'm at the wrinkles of the ape forehead right here. There's the ape's eye. There's the ape's coming over the ape's nostril area. Okay. And there you go. There's a face of an ape right there, showing you that these people are genetically bridging that of our ancestors through these beings that you see depicted. Now, this is a penis. Now, how do they show this? How do they show the direction of these genetics? Well. First of all, I'm going to draw your attention that, remember when I told you that, I showed you in other videos how the snake represents the, um, the rattler and the genetic bridging of reptilians and all of that, um, our ancient ancestor, the dinosaur, remember when I told you that? Well, lo and behold, 
These genetics are shown snaking out of the other end of the opposite end of this penis where the balls should be at. And I can see it perfectly, but you cannot. But I can I can bring you here, show you. See the body of the snake right here? Shown wrapped around his arm in his clothing, cloaked in the sleeve of his clothing. See the body of the snake right there, people? And it's showing you that with this boy with his face laid down into this man's um, um, abdomen area that the snake is bridged these genetics are being bridged and here's the other end that comes out and then they, uh, they are snaked all the way around and you'll see them come down through here and snake down now let me show you what I'm talking about what else I can see this is what it appears like the course of these genetics let me back off some so, so you can get a better oops now should I come up some let me bring this up some there you go you see that people and there's a witch like woman with her face almost looking like that of Queen Esther, the two faces of the mother of creation, it shows you not just one, but multiple evolutionary faces. Look at this. Shows you these snaking genetics. Through this, what I call, you know, you know the name of what you would call this guy here? He's almost can he's almost the prodigal son is almost like um like compared to Jesus and they're prisoners because their bodies are genetically sacrificed. Now, where did I get the term prisoner from? Let me show you something. The term prisoner comes from Da Vinci. Because Leonardo da Vinci candidly shows us what is everything that is here that I'm showing you these little drawings. You see these snake like drawings which they show how they are bridged through here, through their bodies. Da Vinci shows you the similar scenario. And his prisoner painting. Oops, let me go back. All right, should I back up? So, oh no, you should be. And his prisoner painting of the same pauper like fellow. If you were to Google the image, you would not see that Madonna woman, but I can see her because instinctively, people, I know that she's there. I am instinctively connected to these Renaissance artists' artwork. I am a part of everything that you are seeing here. I cannot look at their artwork normally because you know why? It's almost as if I created the painting myself and I can read into it. What's good about that is that a lot of Leonardo da Vinci's works, it's almost like I created them. I can read them. It's like I'm reading you Leonardo da Vinci's paintings, his drawings, his study of all his them, them, them paintings and drawings that he had the study of this and study of that people when I sit down and look at them I sit down them with and look at them in a sense of Leonardo da Vinci and why he drew them and his logic behind drawing them because you know why people I have had a true paranormal experience and an encounter that allows me to see the identity the identity of our evolutionary ancestors and their faces and this is what why I can do this. Look at this Madonna like woman here, this Queen Esther like woman right there. People, she's there too, not just in one face, but in two. I can see their faces. How people, how can I draw you a penis? Give you the ape, the, 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 the face of the, of, the, uh, of the creature that the penis belongs to. And then our mother of creation over here, the witch-like woman that always appear in unison with them. People, I can read this entire image like this from 1600s.
as if I created it myself. Now, look at this. Everything that is here, Leonardo, lo and behold, Leonardo da Vinci has it in his prisoner painting. Now, it gets better, people, because I'm going to take you to now to a... Here's a third century catacomb image of Jesus. And it's titled The Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd. Here, I can lower that some I would imagine. People, look at these faces. I already done just showed you. Look at this reptilian being right here. I'm at the horn on its head on Jesus' shoulder right there. Look at this reptilian being. And here's his nostril. Shows you I'm at the bridge of his nose. Now I'm coming around his top lip. I'm separating the line. People, look at the defining features of the face. Here's the eye. Look at this, people. This is a reptilian being on Jesus' shoulder like that of luggage that he is carrying. Which is, I mean, it is luggage because it's genetic luggage. You see these creatures, people? And guess what? This is not just in this catacomb image. I have done the same scenario with other catacomb images of Jesus. Because you know why, people? I can read them. At Jesus' throat right here, there is an ape. The image of an ape. You can see my video. Now, this thing here, this naked object, look at this. You see that? Oh, gosh. Am I running out of ink here? You see this here, people? These are genetics shown. Here's a face on there. See that face? Genetic bridging and genetic splicing. You see that? That tube right there with that face on the end and with those spikes on the end, I know what this is. Here's another one on this side. There's a mother of creation on that side, which represents that of woman. You know what this is right here, people? This side, the other side, it represents man. And here is our reptilian ape facing this way. I'm at the nostril of the ape there. There's the ape's eye. And on the back of the ape, don't be confused, there's another face. But look at the ape right here. I'm going to bring that in so you can see that ape face. So people, there's no mistaking. Look at this. My reptilian ape, who I've found to be in Nervi Hall and Fizzini's creation, that sculpture, that godforsaken sculpture, which I've discovered to be a grail to how building blocks of genetics were created, altered, and where they came from. You see that ape? This tube represents man, and that tube represents woman. It's mother of creation and original man, which was ape. And this is a, a catacomb image, a third century catacomb image, people. Now, how can I do that? You know why? Because I have had a true paranormal experience. Now, let me run you through this. What is here... You see, look at the clothing, people. Jesus has it uh, like a pauper. It's genetic bridging. He's in between because he's shown genetically bridging everything that is here. Now, this is supposed to be a cock, a rooster, whatever. That is not that. I already explained what that is in my video, and I can actually, I, I can prove it. The same thing that is here, and the, I mean the same symbolization, are the same symbolizations that is there. This is a catacomb image, third century catacomb image. This is Leonardo da Vinci's 16th century drawing. Okay. And this is Rembrandt. No, hold on. This is Leonardo da Vinci. I don't know what year this is. I'm sorry. This is not 16th. Leonardo da Vinci, I think, would have been 14th century, if I need to be corrected. I stand to be corrected. And then we have Rembrandt, which is 16th century. All the same thing, people. Isn't that amazing? Now. Hold on, because it gets better. 
Now, here's Michael Patcher depiction of a pope with a reptilian like ghoul creature. This represents that of being gothic and gothic locations. The same thing that is being implied here is also there. Shows you coming from off this creature's lower area genetic bridging. And it shows these genetics being often. Now remember the snake symbolization here shows these genetics being snaking, snaked over. This same thing, people, is being implied by the tasseling in the Pope's clothing. I can read where these genetics are going. Now, this is a, what, what year was that made? That is 1435 that this was created. Now, here's a, a, a 540-604, um, no, hold on, 1363, I would imagine. 1363, I believe this is. And this is of um, Gregory the Great, okay, which is a pope enough. The same thing that is being said here and implied here, people, with this creature, which you wouldn't think to be real, and I'm telling you that this creature, these genetic, these, this creature is representing genetics, which is real. Look at this. Look at the creature even have a face in his butt. You wouldn't think that nothing like this could be possibly be real, could you? However, the same thing is implied here. And then look on top of this. What else I can see? Can you see that right there? Yes, you can. Look at what I can see in the designs of the paintings. Look at this woman back here that I can see people in a transparent state because I can read. Let me back off. Oh, let me back. People, I can read the entire image, every space that is utilized on this image. I can read in the hair, in the face, everything, people. I know what it means because I am a part of it. I have had a true paranormal experience and encounter. I'm at the lips. There's the nose. I'm in this man's beard. People, I can read what is there. You see that face I just drew upside down in his beard? I'll turn it over in a minute. Now, you see this 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 woman here that looks like Queen Esther? She has a monkey on the back of her as there's her lips, there's her nose, there's her eye. Look at this, people. And on the back of her is an ape. And then other creatures are shown, but I stopped because I didn't want to get carried away because it actually takes away from the, the, the point that I'm trying to make here. But people, these genetic bloodlines, oh, by the way, this creature right there is this creature. Now, it represents a gothic location. See that green creature? Look how the creature's arms are bent. Like that of a mantle. A resting spot for the book. Now notice that the mantle comes out here. Gothic. There's Gothic. And Gothic Gothic scenario, the same exact thing. The same exact book. With the tasseling handing it over to bind it tap. Look at this. Everything is all representing the same exact thing. Look at this. The, the same exact message which is being implied here, which are about genetics and genetic bridging. Look at the hand. Look at the, the um, look how the black cloth is cloaked around the staff there. Look at here how they have the ink tube 
stating the same exact thing how his hand is grasped around the tube and then has the pen written in black and then these same creatures this creature is identical to this creature look at the likeness now this is then the tasseling of the Pope's clothing which in this case there is a snake being shown the skin of a snake and this is the same exact thing but cloaked but it has combined this scenario within here right there now if you know how to read it then you know what it means which I can read it so what I'm telling you is that the same reptilian this gothic reptilian which you actually see on these gothic buildings you know those all those wing beings that you see on top of these gothic buildings with their wings on their back you see that being it's telling you that these gothic locations these gothic churches these gothic holy places the symbolic message there's a symbolic message behind it all and it's all referencing the genetic bridging of that of mankind now what is here what is there what is here what is here what is there and what is here are all implying the same thing it's how our genetics were altered and since this happened on a mass scale people it had to have a genetic reference chart and this is the cause for the Renaissance artist, the boom and Renaissance artist artwork that actually took and took off. And this is the reason why you see these crazy paintings and can't understand what in the world are they trying to say? They're trying to tell us something. To People, one painting after the next, I can do this with. One after another. One after another, I can do the same thing with. And it all references how we came into existence, who is altering our genes, what is going on, what's happening, who you are, who you genetically are, who you're genetically going to become. What's going on back then? Let me see. Do you realize that within a thousand years of this time, or a thousand years of the time that the popes and them are, are altering these genes, do you realize that it actually shows up in human races? That's the reason why they're commemorating these moments. Because what was done then, this is why the Mayans, this is why the um, Sumerians, all of these people claim to be coming back and doing this and doing that, or an uh, uh, Egyptian, an Anakin is going to return on such and such, such and such day. Um, King Tut is going to, I mean, these people are going to return genetically because they had it down to a science. These genetic bridgings, and based on their alterings of our genetics, it showed they knew that these genetics would take off genetically at that point in time and that's what this was all about people you're not in trouble because fortunately I came along and can read this stuff and now the truth can come out and we can address it in our time before it's all too late but people I'm looking at this face I don't know why I didn't drive looking when you google this image also look into the beard of these individuals all up in his hair our evolutionary ancestors are up in it. it shows you the DNA passages look up in the hair up in here all across this image look up in there and you'll see their faces you're not seeing things before you might have thought that you were seeing that oh, I should have came over that nose a little bit better 
all through there it shows you the genetics look into the hair look at these faces people it's almost like a cryptic puzzle and I can read them all I can show you the cyclination of these genetics where they came from what they came from where they're going and what's going on people I can even tell you how ape was created let me give you this let me give you this creature's lips people I can I can tell you how ape was created okay, nobody has never done that before look at this creature let me bring that in closer before I pan out all right my name is Jerome Wright you're watching my Jeronification channel okay um, make sure you see my other videos I think we're going up towards 85 videos now okay so see my other videos and I appreciate your support and I thank you for watching Thank you. I'm going to end this video on that note. See you in my next video.